there was a neurologist named George Miller Beard. And he identified this disorder as a symptom of modern life. It was caused by this faster pace, this unnatural fast pace. Many things, but especially above all, it was caused by modern technology. Technology was not natural. It's degrading us uh, in our biology. Beard's solution was a regimen of electrical shocks. Uh, happily, other physicians called simply for bed rest or isolation. To a lot of intellectuals, they said, well, if this burnout is a symptom of modernity, then our solution is to embrace anti-modernism. So they wanted something more than the superficial consumerism, the secularized drive for material gain that seemed to mark their times. And so many of them rejected modern society in favor of any number of more basic alternatives, a vague return to the simple life, a return to craftsmanship, working with your hands, a return in some cases to medieval-style religious devotions, or a new turn to ancient religious practices of the Far East, indeed a romanticization of all things, uh, as they would have said at the time, oriental. Uh, and so they turn for alternatives to their modern society, oftentimes in a bizarre way, but uh, it gives you, nevertheless, insight uh, into their frustration with this society. For many of them, including the president that I didn't name but was referring to in the football discussion, for many of them, self-exertion was the tonic of choice. Theodore Roosevelt was a young, sickly, elite, old money boy and his solution to all of this was the vigorous life, particularly time spent in the great outdoors. And so in his very famous attempts to invigorate himself and his class, Theodore Roosevelt would hike mountains, hunt big game, engage in cattle ranching in the Badlands, lead military units, and encourage his fellow white men to procreate as much as possible. These were some of his solutions, this vigorous life. 